I took myself. I lived a righteous life. How? By total dependence on my Father. Amen. Jesus says, this life is available to you by total dependence upon me. Amen. And when your life and mine is in harmony with God, we live in harmony with the universe because God's moral law is the foundation of all law. Amen. Child guidance, page 363, paragraph 1. The laws of nature are the laws of God as divine as the precepts of the Decalogue. Do I need to say that again? The laws of nature are the laws of God, as divine as the precepts of the Decalogue. Why? Because the same source that produced the Decalogue produced the laws of nature. So when God made plants, God put in the plants the laws of photosynthesis. For you scientists, you know photosynthesis is it's one of the most basic processes in all of nature, if not the most basic. It is the means by which the plants get food. They take sunlight, water, and they produce sugar, and a byproduct is oxygen. And uh, that's how we get oxygen, one way. Plants do that all the time, and some microorganisms. God put that process in operation when he made plants. But that process came from God. Now you and I may not understand it, but when the universe works the way it should, it reflects the righteousness of God. And so the Bible says, the heavens declare what? The glory of God. What is the glory of God? God's amazing grace, page 322, paragraph 2, the glory of God is His character. The heavens declare, to some degree, the character of God. What's the character of God? Righteousness. Now, as I say, you and I may not understand how the physical laws express the character of God, but the Bible says they do. Because all law comes from the same source, and that source is righteous. Are you with me? Amen. The entire universe moves at one beat, one rhythm. That is righteousness. When you and I live in sin, we are out of step. We are out of rhythm. We're missing the beat of the universe. And the gospel brings us back into harmony with God. Amen. Into harmony with His creation. And so when Jesus comes back, He makes this world brand new. He reestablishes that rhythm, that beat, without the interference of sin. Amen. But to live in that world remain. We must show God now we desire to be in harmony with His universe by being in harmony with His law, by being in harmony with His Son. Amen. From the ground, up. The Ten Commandments are the foundation of all law. And when we live outside of God's law, I repeat, we live in disharmony, if there's such a word. Have you ever listened to the choir and you think out someone singing flat? I don't need this group this morning. <laughs> Singing flat. Sin is that off key or that off note in the universal choir. And it comes from the earth. Are you singing flat? Am I singing flat by the life I live? Sin puts us out of harmony with the entire universe. Not just the police in Los Angeles. The God of heaven and earth. Amen. The God says to you to me today, my son, my daughter, there is a way for you to come back into harmony with me. Amen. You know, we, we, we believe. The Bible gives some tantalizing evidence. Of course, we have other sources. That there are planets where people live who've never sinned. Are you with me? Yeah. Never sin. If Christ comes, I'd like to visit those planets yeah. and see them. Those people live in perfect harmony with God's great law. Amen. And so Revelation 12, 12 says, Woe to the, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, because the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because you know that they have in a short time. 
Now, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. The opposite of that is, those in the heavens, they rejoice. Rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, because this is where sin lives. He no longer has access to the other worlds where people live and have never sinned, because they have lived in conformity with God's law. Amen. And wherever those worlds are, when we accept Christ and we accept His righteousness expressed in His law, and He writes that law in our hearts, we come into harmony with those worlds. <laughs> We come into harmony ultimately with the very throne of God. My brothers and sisters, sin affects every area of the life. From the ground up for the earth, from the ground up for the individual. There's a very powerful statement I'll give to you. Healthful Living, page 233, paragraph 7. We have these words. The consciousness of right doing is the best medicine for diseased bodies and minds. You missed it again. Let me say it again. <laughs> Write the reference down. Healthful Living, page 233, paragraph 7. Listen to the words. Listen. The consciousness of right doing, knowing in your heart I'm doing what's right, is the best medicine for diseased bodies and minds. then a troubled conscience brings sickness. <laughs> if you use the law of opposites, are you listening to me? Amen. And nothing troubles the conscience like sin. <laughs> Let the mind become intelligent and the will be surrendered to God and there will be a remarkable improvement in the physical health. Mind, character, and personality, volume 1, page 34, paragraph 3. I'm trying to connect obedience with good health, not just spiritual, but physical. Listen to the words again. Let the mind become intelligent. The only way for the mind to become intelligent, as God measures intelligence, is for the mind to be harmony with God. Are you listening to me? And the will be surrendered to God, and there will be, she writes, a wonderful improvement in the physical health, meaning that obedience to God brings good health. It'll vary from person to person, yes. But there's health in obedience because obedience brings you into harmony with the entire universe. But all forms of sickness mean that the body is out of harmony in some form or fashion. So I ask you this morning, are you in harmony with God's universe or out of harmony? You can leave this place today in harmony with God. You and I can leave this place today with God's blessings in our lives from the ground up. Or we can walk out being negatively affected by sin from the ground up. It's up to us. Either way, the effects are from the ground up. Is there a man, is there a woman, who will say to God, Father, I am living out of harmony with your law. So I'm out of harmony with your entire universe. I am living out of harmony with your law, your righteousness, the very foundation of your throne, I am out of harmony because I am living contrary to your law. Is there someone in that condition? Can I see your right hand? You've got to be honest. I want you to stand. Then I have something else to say. I am living out of harmony with God's law, which puts me out of harmony with God's universe. But I assume by standing you want to say, Father, I do not want to continue living out of harmony with God's law and God's universe. Because the law is life to those who accept it through Christ. I am living out of harmony with God's law. And this experience will damage the life at every single level because sin has no benefits. Now the devil will 